the opportunity to review them? Briefly. Uh, briefly, yes. Okay. All right. Well, at least you've got them. So, uh, I found nothing objectionable at, at this point. Okay. What, do you have a, a sense of timing at this point? How, how many, how much more time we have for testimony uh, for the witnesses you have for today? Um, we may finish uh, witnesses today, Your Honor, or at least uh, be within one witness uh, only tomorrow morning. Right? Okay. So if that is the case, uh, we certainly are going to do instructions to that. We would save any of that for tomorrow. Everyone in agreement there? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Doctor, you please state your name. David Bodie. And what is your title? I am a family physician, but also a deputy coroner of Ottawa County. Okay, as a deputy coroner, what do your duties include? When the uh, coroner is unavailable, uh, would be to go to any sites where needed uh, where somebody is deceased within the county. And um, what? Uh, how long have you been a deputy coroner? I believe uh, he became elected in uh, 2013, 2012, 2012. So since 2012? Yes. Okay. And um, what kind of, uh, I guess, so then you have an MD? Correct. Okay. We would stipulate the qualifications of Dr. Bowie. All right. Thank you. Doctor, were you, uh, are you familiar with the Randall Ross case? I am. So, did you get called out to the scene on March 27, 2013? I do. You did? Okay. Um, and what um, did you do when you got there? Um, at the time when I got there, the uh, scene was already uh, roughed off. There was an officer downstairs uh, outside, and he escorted me in. I had to sign in because they had uh, uh, basically the, the scene closed off until I was there. Um, at that time, he proceeded uh, to escort me upstairs to uh, where uh, the body lay. Um, at that time, I uh, examined uh, the body. Um, it had been worked on by EMS uh, prior to me getting there, um, and uh, it was uh, confirmed that she had passed away. Okay, and how was that confirmed? Um, no, uh, uh, EMS had confirmed it by using a pads checking a heart monitor. Um, so that was pretty much it, even before I was there. But just confirm after I looked at their rhythm strips. So did you confirm that the, uh, the individual uh, was deceased? Yes. Okay. And I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 83. Is that, Doctor, is that the victim you observed on the 27th? That is. Okay. And, Doctor, what um, what do we see there in that 
uh, in that exhibit, State's Exhibit A3, with regard to uh, the wound on the victim? Um, when I had examined her, she was in that position, and I had noted that there was a single wound in the center of the chest just uh, to the right uh, at that time. Um, also, I had noted that she was in, uh, intubated uh, by the EMS and that they had also placed a uh, peripheral <coughs> in the left antecubital arm there. Uh, also, you can see that there were pads in the left lower abdomen there. Uh, and that was a pad for monitoring her heart and other vital signs. Okay. So to be clear, how do you know that uh, the victim was deceased? Again, uh, looking at the rhythm strip from the uh, uh, EMS when they had performed their duties prior to me arriving, but also I checked for pulses and any signs of uh, life. Did you find any signs of life? No. Okay. And Doctor, I'm showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 91. What do we see in State's Exhibit 91 with regard to uh, any wound? Uh, it, it, after I examined a uh, patient uh, myself, and uh, I believe it was uh, another deputy or officer at the scene, uh, assisted me in rolling uh, Ms. Ross over so that we could see if there were any other wounds. Uh, and then we had seen that there was a what appeared to be an exit wound in her lower left uh, back. So after you went to the scene and made these uh, observations, then what, uh, what did you do? Um, I did take some interviews of uh, other witnesses uh, at the scene. I believe her sister was there. Uh, I had spoken with her to get some information. Um, also to gather some information about uh, the patient herself, um, who her family physician was, if she was on any medications. And I looked to see if there were any medications at the scene. What time did you arrive at the scene? Uh, I believe in, in my report around 12.30, 12.34, I believe. I have to look exactly. And uh, when you got there, the EMS had already been there. Mm -hmm. No further questions? No questions of this witness. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Pandy. Truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as you shall enter battle. Yes, I do. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you tell us your name, please? Uh, my name is Dr. Manisha Pandey. Yeah, are you employed? Yes. Excuse Where are you me? employed? Would you spell your name, please? Yes, Manisha, M A N E E. S-H-A, Pandey, P-A-N-D-E-Y. Thank you. Sorry. And where are you employed, doctor? I'm employed at Lucas County Coroner's Office. What are your duties at the coroner's office? I'm a deputy coroner and a forensic pathologist, and I perform autopsies to determine cause and manner of death. Uh, how long have you been so employed? Um, I've been employed there for approximately eight years now. You stipulate to the qualifications as an expert? So stipulate. Thank you. Do you recall performing a, an autopsy on Amy Ross? Yes. Okay. Could you tell us about your autopsy of Amy Ross? Um, Amy Ross um, basically had, a, on external examination, had a gunshot wound to her chest, and it um, basically went in and there was an exit wound as well. Anything else remarkable about Amy Ross other than the gunshot wound? No, that was her only injury. Okay, so you determined that the gunshot wound was the cause of death then? Yes. Okay. What uh, vital organs, if you remember, did the bullet go through while traversing her body? 
on the path of the bullet was through the heart and uh, through the diaphragm, which is a respiration muscle, and basically it went down. So it was going from up to down, front to back, and right to left. So the, uh, the bullet passing through the heart was uh, sufficient to cause her death? Yes, because, um, yes, it was. Okay, what parts of the heart were involved in the, with the bullet? Um, there was the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve. Um, so those are all very major organs. And once the heart is involved, lots of blood exudes out. So she had about 1,000 ml of blood in one chest cavity on the left and about 600 ml on the right. So pretty much her lungs were floating in blood because of the heart being involved. Uh, can you say, can you estimate um, or give an opinion? based upon your education and experience as to how long she would have lived after suffering such a wound? Um, a few seconds to maybe a few minutes, but not more than that. Exhibit 148 is my summary of my autopsy report, my report of autopsy, as well as toxicology report on Amy Ross. Uh, toxicology reveal anything significant? Um, no, there was no uh, significant toxicological findings. Okay. Uh, and your, your report uh, uh, goes into greater detail about the cause of death and the condition of the body than what you've already testified about today, is that correct? Yes. Uh, for instance, her height and weight, uh, conditions of various organs and so forth, right? Yes. But other than the, other than the wound uh, to the chest and out the back, there was no other uh, cause of death? No, there was not. I have uh, <coughs> photos uh, that I'm going to show you and ask you if you recognize these. This is State's Exhibit 126. <clears throat> and 127. And what do those photos depict, Doctor? Um. Exhibit 126 is the lower portion of Amy Ross's body of her chest and lower extremities as well as her legs. Um, and Exhibit 127 is a <coughs> photo of Amy Ross's body also, but it shows the back um, up to the buttocks, from the neck to the buttocks. Okay. From your report uh, at a different angle. <laughs> okay. So these two exhibits, 126 and 27, show the uh, entrance and exit wounds uh, prior to any uh, invasive examination of the body. Yes. Okay. I'll show you what has been marked as state's exhibits. 111, depicting some shoes, 115, some pants, 112, a bra, one, Seventeen, a hooded sweatshirt. The, is that the clothing as you found it from Amy Ross on that day? Yes, that is what Amy Ross was wearing on that day. Okay, the, the hooded sweatshirt is significant because there, there's a hole in the front which would correspond with the entrance wound, is that correct? Yes, the hole in the front corresponded to the entrance wound on the chest. Okay, I'll show you what is remarked as 116 and 118. This would be the back of the uh, hooded sweatshirt she was wearing, is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
it appears as if you can see it somewhat in 116, but even more so in 118, a um, two holes in the sweatshirt. I'll show you 118 here. If there's just one exit wound in the back, how would you account for two holes in the hooded sweatshirt? Um, the reason the hooded sweatshirt probably has two holes is because it was folded. So when the, especially sweatshirts, they are a little bigger, so they would fold and it'll go through the folds, causing two holes. I see. And this would be a, would be a longer shot of that, the back of that, correct? Yes. One last photo, it is States Exhibit 131. Okay, 131. Could you uh, tell the jury what's depicted in that photo? Um, exhibit 131 is uh, a photograph of Amy Ross's internal, um, the chest plate and a uh, metallic probe going through the chest towards the exit. This is basically depicting the uh, a direction of the wound. So there you'll see a metallic probe which goes from the sternum down coming out the front, um, coming out the back, left lower back. And that metallic probe would trace the path of the bullet through uh, Mrs. Ross' spot. Yes, that's how it, the bullet would have gone. And that is the bullet that would have caused her death in your opinion? Yes. Do these pictures accurately depict the scenes as you saw them? Uh, during Amy Ross's autopsy. Yes. Now I move for the introduction of the, uh, the exhibits and the uh, autopsy report. No objection. Admitted. Thank you, Doctor. I have nothing further. No questions of this witness. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Your Honor, the state calls Dr. Kennedy, Dr. Daniel Kennedy. If you come around here, please. testimony that you're about to give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that you shall answer unto God. I do. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, Doctor. Can you please state your name? Dr. Daniel Cadigan. And how uh, how are you employed? I am the coroner of Ronald County. Okay. How long have you been the coroner? Since January of 2013. Okay. What do your duties include as the coroner? Uh, Corner and duties are death scene investigation, determination of the cause and manner of death. Um, and you have an assistant uh, deputy coroner? Deputy coroner. Yes. Dr. Bodie? Dr. David Bodie, correct. Okay. Um, did you, um, are you familiar with the Randall Ross case? Yes. And what was your involvement in that case? I was um, called on the morning of the death. Um, I was out of the state at the time. I spoke with Dr. Bodie, who was, went to the scene um, and did a scene investigation from the coroner's perspective. Um, subsequently, we sent the deceased remains to Lucas County for an autopsy. Um, and after a review of the autopsy and the coroner's investigative notes, uh, completed and signed the death certificate. Okay. So the procedure you use to ultimately get to uh, signing a death certificate, what does that entail then? Review of the autopsy report, discussion with um, the deputy coroner on scene, um, discussion of thing, witness, uh, witness reports, EMS, police officers on scene, and predominantly, again, review of the autopsy report and discussion with the uh, forensic pathologist performing the autopsy in Lewis County. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, <coughs> handing the 
defense was the market of states exhibit 147. Factor, I'm handing you what's been marked states exhibit 147. Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes. And what is it? It's a certificate of death pertaining to the death of Amy Ross. Okay. So it was determined that Amy Ross uh, died on, uh, uh, she, she died? Correct. Okay. And that was on, uh, does it say, give a date of March yes, 27? March 27, 2015. Okay. Thank you. Um, you are at this time to state the move to admit states exhibit 147. No objection is to 147. Admit it. No further questions. We have no questions of this witness. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Your next witness. State calls Amy Gore. Where the testimony you're about to give today is the truth of the truth and nothing but the truth. So we're trying to get out of here. Detective, could you say your name? Amy Gore. Jane Gore. What is your title? I'm a detective with the Auburn County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been a detective with the Auburn County Sheriff's Office? Since 2007. And uh, you worked at the sheriff's office before that, right? Yes, 21 years total. How many years? 21 total. Okay. As a detective, what are your duties? Uh, we, we, we're a small sheriff's office, so we investigate everything. We don't have certain people who handle murders, certain people who handle rapes. We handle everything. So from burglary to theft to murder. So to investigate crimes? Yes. Um, and in your experience, have you ever investigated a murder before? Before this, yes. Okay. Now, scene, what did you do? Uh, when I got to the scene, I arrived at 12.02 in the afternoon, and uh, Mr. Ross was still uh, being looked at in front of the, his vehicle. Um, so they shortly thereafter transported him. Um, I went in to the scene when I observed uh, everyone was kind of using the front door that you've seen, that front door. Um, but in that area was a lot of the blood, so I asked that everyone move to the back door instead of tra trampling through what could be something that we would need. So I changed it to the back door and had everyone go in and out of there. Um, I look, went upstairs quickly. Um, they were still working on Amy, so I came back downstairs and I made the call to BCI. And I. Okay, and, then, and that's when uh, the BCI uh, uh, office came uh, shortly thereafter? Yes, and they absolutely specialize in crime scene. Okay, and that's when uh, Detective Hammond uh, came out to the scene? Agent Hammond and Hamburg arrived, yes. Um, so when you, when you arrived and you saw uh, Mr. Ross, did you have an opportunity to see what he was wearing? I did not. You did not? I did not. Did you, um, um, did you see the victim uh, at the scene? I did. You did? Yes. So you saw what the victim was wearing? Yes. And were you involved with collecting uh, uh, any uh, uh, evidence of clothing? Yes. Okay. What, uh, what sort of evidence did you collect? Um, at Later, um, the evidence was brought for what Mr. Ross was wearing. Um, that evidence was collected at the hospital and then brought to the property room where I would essentially take custody of it. Um, but I did not open the bags or anything, so I couldn't tell you what was in those bags. I just took custody of it at a later date. Um, and then during the autopsy, I went to the autopsy of Amy Ross and collected her clothing at that time which would have been the following day on the 28th. Okay. Um, you were, when Agent Hammond was testifying about the, uh, the scene and the, 
the bedroom where Amy Ross was, was found, were, were you, you were at the scene? Correct. Okay. So you, um, you also observed uh, many of the items that uh, Agent Hannon testified about, the shell casings and that sort of Yes, I would have been right alongside him with less time to learn how to collect things and what to do and what not to do. Okay, uh, second, this time I'm going to um, crunch you with a bag. Put some hands on. about handing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 154. Uh, there are scissors around here somewhere. Uh, one, States Exhibit 154, what is that an exhibit of? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. States Exhibit 154, what is that? It is uh, the bullet from the upstairs hallway, which would have been placard F. It's a Blazer 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. Okay, so it corresponds to uh, Agent Hammond's diagram here? Yes, and that was actually, inside of that was the actual so detective states exhibit 154 is f right here on the diagram correct Live round hasn't been funded. Has not been funded. Yeah, if I could, if you just went to that. And a defense was going to mark the state's exhibit 155. States Exhibit 155, if you could please open that exhibit. On the outside, it reads the Area H, which is another live round laser 40 Smith & Wesson. The detective Area H is right here on the diagram. Your pen's kind of, yes. Box that's sealed. 
today. There's no question we would, it, to strike her statement as it relates to the box around what she was talking about. What? I believe it might have been a, a statement to herself. I'm a responsive. That, that will be stricken when the jury is asked to disregard the statement. What is in uh, that exhibit? Uh, it was this small box that contained another live round, so it has not been fired. Let's finish with the exhibit. What letter was that uh, live round from? H. H. Any defense was from Marcus State Exhibit 156. Executive on any U.S. Bill Marcus State's Bill 156. Do you know what 156 corresponds to on the chart? Yes, it's area P as in Paul. P? P as in Paul. <clears throat> so that would be right here on the chart? Yes. know how exhibit 157 corresponds to the chart? Area O. Area O, so that would be right here, right in front of the deck? Correct. corresponds to the diagram? Area K. Area K. So let's look at it right here. Yes. And what is contained in States Exhibit 158? It's also a fire casing. Know what's uh, what is contained in Exhibit 159? It's one of the cell phones that were taken from the scene. Okay. You can open that. Now, Henny, what's been 
mark the state's exhibit 160. Verizon cell phone. Do you know whose cell phone that belonged to? Uh, on the evidence bag, it states that it was taken from Randy Ross. Okay. States is in a 159. The other cell phone, the other cell phone that, that belonged to? Uh, it was in the kitchen on a charger. Okay. You don't know whose cell phone that is? I do not. Okay. And you have to mark this exhibit 161. You open that exhibit. What is that? So this is a Samsung cell phone. Do you know whose cell phone that is? I do not. Was also in the kitchen. Were you involved in taking any of these cell phones to uh, Toledo to be analyzed? I did. I took them to Toledo. Okay. Do you know if uh, information was collected from any of these phones? Yes. And which phone was information collected from? Summer Swope's phone and Amy Ross's phone. Was any information collected from uh, Randall Ross's phone? It was not. And why is that if you know? There was a password on it. Okay. Um, now I'm going to Detective Henny has been marked as State's Exhibit 163. Thank you. 
white socks, and tennis shoes that I collected at the autopsy. The other one was in there as well. Ross was wearing at the time. Okay. Underwear. Okay, what else is 162? The pants and belt that he would have had on. Okay. Anything else in 162? Yes. Lastly, the socks okay. that he would have had on. Okay, thank you. You notice anything unusual uh, about the clothes? Um, they smell of old blood, and there's a lot of dry blood on them. was wearing that day. Okay. Is there anything else in stages of 164? Um, what you're seeing is the trying to keep the blood from seeping out of the bag. So this would have been a sheet from the coroner's office. Okay.
and he was from Arkansas State to 165. Please look at that. Collected at the time of her autopsy. Okay, and again, the paper is from the coroner's office? Yes, just to try to keep the blood from seeping out of the bag. Driveway from, from where Randy Ross was located in the driveway. What what do you see there on that exhibit? Uh, a lot of dried blood. You see any, anything else on the exhibit? Um, it says in white. And uh, what is what is in one seven? The baseball hat that was found in the child's bedroom.
uh, you're right, the state moves for the admission of states exhibits 155 through 168 as well as 153. I'm sorry, 153? And 153. Which one was 150? The boots. The boot, I apologize. 153 is the boots. Thank you. Uh, no objection, Judge. As well as one fifty four, one fifty four being one fifty four placard, the bullet upstairs, the placard F. Right. Thank you. Um, the house where you did this investigation and you observed uh, the uh, deceased body of Amy Ross, what county was that in? Ottawa County. Okay. Ottawa County, Ohio? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. No questions of this witness. Thank you. Thank you. Good expert. Our next witness is our last witness. That would be Andrea Slope. Maybe take a few minute break. Right. Um, we're going to take a break until uh, this clock says 20 minutes after the hour. Uh, we'll be back then. All rise. Well, yeah, I guess. Is that open? It's open. 